welcome and today we're going to be talking about Ethercat and a Festo controller that's new in the market CPX ECCC1 controller the dash PN means that this couple ports on the left talk third-party Profinet we're not using that today we're going to discuss specifically the Ethercat master that's on board and we're going to use this PLC to talk to a FB37 which is also a uh, CPX FB37, different lineup at Festo. And there's some MA, MPAS valves and a couple IO cards. This is the general topology. The, the new C CPX CEC controller is, uh, this is a little bit of a close picture of it here. The bottom port is the Ethercat port. There's two Ethernet ports here and there's two Profinet ports over here, uh, which are neither of them are. The Ethernet or the Profinet are not masters. They're only Ethercat master. Okay, so the goal here is to start a new project. We're going to be using the codices from Festo, provided by Festo, service patch, service pack 10, patch 4. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got a blank project here, and we're going to click on New. We're going to find a directory to store this in. I have this directory right here. I'm going to call it this. Select that as a project. Click OK. We get this pop up here. Uh, we're going to select CECC1 as the PLC. I'm going to go with structure text because I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm just going to show you the IO working. And we're going to add an Ethercat master. So we'll let it build the project here. And it builds the project. So, first thing you do, double click on the PLC. And you need to make sure that you can scan the PLC on the network. Okay, so set this as active target or double click it. I like to come into this setting right here, click on a couple of things right here. This allows the IO devices to be updated automatically all the time, whether you're in run or stop. The, uh, and now that we have that, um, I'm going to download the project because that's the simplest way I go about it. I'm going to show you the easy way first when you have the hardware connected and everything. And if you don't have everything connected, the uh, the normal situation is probably true. You know, I'll make sure that this right here is connected because there's no uh, DHCP server in my network here. So I have hard-coded IP addresses for everything. The uh, the PLC out of the box um, comes with some generic Ethernet IP address, and so if you go into the user manual for the CPX E C C, you'll find that the factory setting is 192.168.2.1, which is the factory setting, and If you download the Festo Field Device Tool and scan the network, you'll see that you uh, get this right here, and then you can right-click, go to Network, and you can modify the IP address to something that's on your actual sub-network. I've already done that previously. So now we've scanned the network, and I'm going to dump the program in so that it's got a base. Okay, so project is there. I'm not going to put it in a run. And I forgot one step. So I'm just going to back up a little bit. So I'm going to go back offline, go into the CPXE, and go to actual config, scan it. 
apply it and it'll populate the modules over here on the left which is what we're going to do next on the EtherCAT. I don't think I can do this offline. Can I scan for devices here? Yeah, you can. So um, as soon as you have the target set up, offline or online, uh, you can come in here and scan what's on your network physically connected. And you see here, there's this FB37 and all the modules that are on here. So the one key thing here is if you want to assign an IP, this is an alias address, so if you want to assign an address, I have, you basically put in an address here, you say assign, you cycle power to it, and you hit OK, and then it'll be like that. So now I'm going to simply copy this to the project. And save it, download it. And we have all greens. We're still in stop mode. So, so right now, if I wanted to, I could come into here. I set these bits. I've got the outputs wired to the input card, and therefore the I/O is updating. If you were to look at the face of the I/O card, you would see that this the I/O is happening. So, all the I/O is happening, and that again is because I have this update IO on stop. So we're done. That's that's the hardware portion of it, and that's where this video is more or less going to stop. Um, so if you want to do everything manually, the uh, um, you would simply right click, add device, and you'd start looking for the devices. FB37. Add device. And now you would start adding your modules. So right here, we're going to add this. And then we need a. Just, uh, I'd like to point out one thing. The description here, the name is quite, I don't know, overwhelming and descriptive. What you should be looking at down here is this right here. That's a little easier to contend with. When you look at the front of the module that I'm going to add, um, it'll have this, this lingo on it. So right now we're looking for 8DI. And uh, there's an 8DI right there. Say add device, and then the next one would be a 4AI. So we're looking for the thermocouple, and so this right here. So it's a TC I have. So add a device. And then we're coming back down here to the this one right here, 8DIDO, and then. Okay, we're going to add the MPAS, and that portion is done. So there's, there's how you manually add everything. And then uh, there are a couple other things to contend with here, so or to be aware of. So I'm just going to, for the sake of backing up a little bit here, I'm just going to rescan this. That way I know for sure I've got it right for the sake of this video. And I've got some files here. So this is my file here. And I've got two. OK, so. This is me going online to the CC controller, just so you can see everything here from, a, from this standpoint here, in case there's any questions about this. Uh, this one right here that we're not using, it has all the parameters here. Uh, this FMT software, again, available at the website, Festo, support portal downloads. And I'm just going to close this one, save it, and open up the other one, the FB37. This one here, 
I actually have to use uh, the Festo dongle. Um, why am I having a problem like this? Okay, what the problem was was I hadn't hooked up the, the dongle yet. So now that I have the dongle there, select the COM port, hit OK, go online. And this is the uh, this is the, the setup for the FB37 and what you can see here. And you'll notice here that there are parameters. That's what these are called for the various modules that are on here. Uh, here's a here's a good one here that has quite a few parameters. You have a sensor type and so on and so forth. So what we need to do is we need to set up the parameters in the, the PLC so that they're downloaded on startup and you don't have to use the Festo maintenance tool to, to do that. So I'm just going to leave that on for a second. And how you go about doing that is quite simple. And uh, well, I guess I could have also I forgot a couple things here. So automatic restart slaves, that's nice to have turned on. The uh, I like to have two, two second uh, scan and under here, we've got distributed clock, it's enabled. And you can try this as you go along here. Save, it's gonna dump this in and see if it still works. Give it a second to respond. And then it does not like the distributed clock. So going back to the parameters. So we have startup parameters. And depending on what you have module-wise underneath here, it populates this list here. So if you want to have module parameters for this particular uh, analog input card here, you basically select the parameters and you can drag them in. Hit OK and it populates them for you. Now, at this time, this is Service Pack 10 and there's a minor bug. And the minor bug is when you do what I just did there, you have to kind of fix something. So um, the bit length, this is, this is bytes, it's not it should be actually eight bits because uh, the smallest is one byte. So you basically have to come back and just double click and see how it's bit length eight here and hit enter. So just double click, enter, double click, enter, double click, enter. See how it's now populating real values. Small bug, it's gonna be fixed in service pack 11 or 12, depending on what you get. All right, so you would do that for each and every one. And I'm just gonna quickly do that. Okay, so what I did here was I added all of them that I felt was necessary. Um, way too many, obviously, but I just did it for the heck of it. Um, there's some fail-safe values, all kinds of uh, good things to configure. And when you download this, it's gonna be updated, and I'm just gonna show you that. So we're running now, and so now I can come into here, set some bits, and uh, I've got, where is it, analog input.
I've got an input going off and on. Got temperature coming in. 31 degrees in here, it's getting hot. Um, so that's it. The, that's the gist of setting up an EtherCAT uh, device on the CPXE system. I look forward to other videos on the same series of PLC uh, for other hardware.